In Final Fantasy XIV, there are a wide variety of ways to improve. Be it by going into high-end raids to test your skills, or just hitting a striking dummy to improve your rotation, the possibilities are truly endless. So today, I'll be discussing 5 ways to improve yourself in even normal mode dungeons. Yes, even from level 15, you can start improving it yourself in noticeable ways just by doing a few easy steps. I'm Ray, a high-end raider with multitude of savage and ultimate clears under my belt, and I'll be your raid lead today. Let's get into it. So given that the target audience for this video may not even be done the story yet, and may just want to prepare for endgame raids just for you, there won't be any spoilers in this video. A few endgame dungeons will be shown, but will be absent of context. First thing on the list is to make sure that you are properly geared. I know it sounds weird for improvement, but preparation is a major part of getting better at this game, and gearing is part of that. Every 10 levels starting from level 50, you can exchange Tome Stones to the highest item level gear you can get at that level. All of these exchanges require Poetics, except for Cap level, which will require harder to obtain Tomes. Typically getting a full set of these, including accessories, is enough to get you through until the next time you can upgrade via Tomes, but make sure you're getting Dungeon Loot too, as that gear will be a little stronger than even the Tome gear. Alternatively, you can even get gear that as you level via the Market Board or vendors from across the world. Vendor gear won't be as good as market board stuff as it won't be high quality gear, but market board pricing might be a little bit too much for some players, so pick your poison. Secondly, since we're talking about dungeons here, make sure you know your AoE rotation. Short for area of effect for the uninitiated, every single job in the game has a way of dealing damage to multiple opponents at once. Learn how to use these in the best way you can. Some jobs get these options early, like Machinists who get spread shot at level 18, but others that get them much later on, like Dragoon who doesn't get Doom Spike until level 40. Oops, side note, Yoshi P, can we get this like at not this high of a level? Thanks. How do you know if I should be using my AoE options or not? I hear some of you asking, and for some jobs, that's easy. Using Scholar as an example, its AoE move, Art of War, is famously a gain on two targets, as 180 potency is higher than Broil's 295 potency even hitting two or more targets. Other jobs are more complicated though. Like Dragoon that wants to alternate its damage over time combo on two targets and AoE at three. Red mages need to do a jolt into impact on exactly two targets and it fucking sucks. The point is that you need to either look up a guide or you can look at your opponents and do the math yourself. It's a case by case basis and I really can't give a blanket answer here. If you have any questions regarding this, food, leave a comment or stop on my stream and ask me there. How's that for a segue? Link in description. Drop a follow, drop a sub here on YouTube too. Anyways, thoroughly we have a dungeon specific improvement. Learn how to pull wall to wall. What this means is after you beat a boss, you grab every single mandatory ad between you and the next time the game has a wall of some sort, and you AoE everything down. From what I've gathered and with completely admitted personal bias, this is expected more and more the game that you get through. Do note this task is easier in dungeons found in Expert and the 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 roulette, as your gear will easily allow you to take basically zero damage from everything in the dungeon. We do need to go into role specific advice here. DPS, make sure you're using your AoE buffs during ad pulls to kill them faster, as adds hit way harder than any of the bosses. Healers, make sure that you're using every button at your disposal. A good example here is Sage and their Panheima and Holo skills. Yes, it applies in an area of effect, but it is still very valuable during mob pulls as they are still shields and mitigation for the tank. Tanks, you should be blowing every single cooldown on ad pulls. You will never need them on a boss. Yes, some bosses will do tank busters, but by the time these become noticeable, you'll have spammable cooldowns available for all of these. All of your big cooldowns should be used on the ads on the way to the bosses, as I, as mentioned earlier, they will hit harder than anything the bosses will do. On the topic of tank cooldowns, your invulns are also valuable here on ad pulls. Granted, Holler is a bit more useful than Home Gang, but don't hold on to these. These buttons say, don't die on them. What are you holding them for? Some of the things to note is that arm's length is a cooldown. 20% slow means that ads are attacking you 20% less which is massive. Tanks and melee have Leg Sweep, which stops an ad from attacking you for an actual eternity, which is a cooldown. Reprisal, also a cooldown. For you DPS players, Faint and Addle are also cooldowns. Don't just sit on these skills. These help you with survivability way more than you realize. Fourth thing on today's list is a big one. 
LBing ad packs and bursting ad packs. Contrary to popular belief, the purpose of limit breaking isn't to be a super cool finishing move. It's actually supposed to be a large burst of damage. This being the case, wouldn't we want to make said limit break more valuable? According to an old Reddit post, melee LB1 is worth about 2,400 potency, and LB2 is 5,250. Pretty nice, right? Typically I see LB1 or 2 at the tail end of most last bosses of a dungeon to finish it off, so we can use that as our starting point. Caster and range LB1 has a potency of 1,650 and is an area of effect. Meaning, if that we were to get only an LB1 on the final boss, Caster and Range LB is efficient at two targets. Theoretically, if we were to get LB2, it's still efficient at four targets with just Limit Break 1. Oftentimes, the biggest pack of a dungeon will have 10 or more targets as well, so your Limit Break gets a bunch of value if you just nuke everything at once. I mentioned it briefly earlier, but make sure you're bursting ads and not always holding burst for bosses. This one will take some practicing, as it's not always worth bursting ads, as the pack is maybe about to die anyways. But you shouldn't be holding burst phases for bosses all the time. You can lose multiple uses of your big buttons simply because you chose not to click it because it's just ads. It's still an HP bar in the way of what you wanted out of the dungeon, so just remove the health bar. <laughs> Lastly, number 5. Practice good habits. Just because you're in a your dungeon doesn't mean you should be lazy. If you want to get better at the game, take every opportunity you get to improve yourself, as you'll never know when you might hit a breaking point understanding something. In addition, if you play out of your mind in a dungeon, I promise you, people notice. I've had many times where I notice things are dying faster than normal or a tank isn't dying, and I just think to myself, man, someone here is cracked out of their mind right now. It is incredibly satisfying to go into endgame dungeons and get out within like 12 minutes. To do that, everyone has to do their part, so just make sure every single time, you're doing yours. So that's the list. I know for a lot of people, this was a very no shit kind of list, or maybe you think I'm taking dungeons too seriously, as to that, I would disagree. If you've watched this far, you want to improve, and I commend you, and I strongly advise you take what I said seriously and try it out. I plan on making a few more videos for higher end content and how to improve there. So if you want to see when those go live, drop a sub and ring the bell, as that I've been told that that does something. If you have anything you want me to talk about, leave a suggestion in the comments or stop by the stream, I'd be thrilled to see you there. But that's all for now. Take it easy.